Hi, I'm Dan Houlihan. I'm one of the uh, past presidents of the EMC Society, and I had the pleasure of leading that group from 1998-1999. And today we have another past president of the EMC Society here. And we're not here to necessarily talk about his career, but we heard a rumor uh, yesterday that uh, Joe Fisher's dad was a sailor of dirigibles. Am I saying that dirigible correctly? It's a dirigible. Yeah, that, that, that's close. Whatever. Well, How you ever want to hyphenate it, that's okay. Well, Joe, what was your uh, dad's name? And My uh, dad was also Joseph Fisher. He was, okay. Yes, and, and when and was he doing this, uh, sailing was, these he dirigibles? Was, it was in the 1920s, the U.S. Navy, uh, and flying uh, lighter than air dirigibles. He flew specifically on the USS Los Angeles, which was an airship that was about 800 feet long, 150 feet in diameter. They would take patrols to uh, support the Marines, even in Nicaragua. So they would fly out from Lakehurst, New Jersey would fly over the Alamo, then fly down over Nicaragua, then to Buenos Aires. Were they, were they helium based or hydrogen based? Oh, helium based. Helium based. They were yes, safe. Well, they, they were safe. Thank goodness that they <laughs> would not sell. As a matter of fact, the Germans tried to buy helium from us prior to, to World War I. And fortunately, the United States was smart enough not to sell Say it. no, huh? Yeah. So at any rate, the, uh, the USS Los Angeles carried six fighter aircraft that they could, they could uh, uh, trapeze, pull them up into the air, really? into, the, uh, into the, store them inside the uh, airship as well as launch them. So they had ground support. They, they provided ground support to U.S. Marines on more than one occasion. Could they launch the airplanes while the dirigible was in the air? Yes, <laughs> that's what I meant. Oh, they were, well, I just wanted to double check that. <laughs> they were. They, they. These were tactical, tactical fighter aircraft that could be launched and and retrieved while the air while the airship was still moving. And you said that even though there was, uh, you know, a certain amount of tension between the United States and other countries at that time, that there was always a lot of camaraderie between the, uh, yes. the uh, you call them sailors because the boats or the dirigibles. <clears throat> My dad knew all the sailors on the, on the Hindenburg as well as the uh, Graf Zeppelin. The Graf Zeppelin started, uh, was an earlier airship, earlier than the Hindenburg, and there were... German sailors on that, and they actually had uh, commercial flights between uh, Germany and uh, Lakehurst in the 1920s, early 1920s. We know that we know the Hindenburg went up in flame, right? Yes. How about the Graf Zeppelin? That was just it. Just finally was dismantled. But was it helium based or hydrogen it was, based? It was hydrogen based. Ooh, but no explosions, huh? No. <laughs> No, so they had that down, how to land right. it or correctly. And right. They had to, had to learn all about electron. Uh, you talk about uh, electrical discharges, that was it. How fast would, uh, how fast would it uh, move? They would, it would average about 60 miles an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, well, the, air, the, the Los Angeles was like 800 feet in long and, and 150 feet in diameter. And it had had 90 sailors on board. Wow. So it was quite a quite a large crew. And it was it had a propeller in the back or had had, had eight uh, six six or eight engines. <laughs> that was I realize it was uh, that yeah, big. And and they were and of course in those days the controls there had to be sailors manning each engine. So how long did your uh, dad do this? He was from roughly from about 1920 to 1932. And then he retired from, like, the Navy? Well, or? no, he just got out. Oh, he just got out. <laughs> well, I hope well, he was out ground level when he got well, out. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, my dad lost over 90 of his best friends. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> Shenandoah, which was another one, well, crashed at, at the Michigan State Fair. Oh. And it killed uh, all but one of the sailors on that. 
my dad would have been on that flight <laughs> except for the fact he was on leave. Why, why did that uh, particular dirigible crash, was it? Because it was, it was reported to have lightning storms in oh. the area, yet the Secretary of the Navy was ordered. They wanted a show of force at the Michigan State Fair, and so the commander was ordered to, 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 to fly go. regardless of the weather. Do you remember the year that happened? Uh, I'm trying to remember whether it was 19, it was 1930, oh, okay. three or 34 or 35. Okay, early 30s, I'm not sure. early 30s. Or... Uh, I'm, well, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm, I'm way over that. No, it okay. was in the, it was in the late 1920s. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was way off. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no uh, problem. 19, remember somewhere between 1925 and 1928. We eventually would have Googled that and found out the right date. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. So you got to keep me honest here. <laughs> So what, what was the, uh, like, uh, when your dad would uh, talk about his experience, uh, did he have a particular dangerous experience at any time with a dirigible? Or? Well, uh, don't know about, yes, I think one time when he was, he was, tr the, he, they trained in blimps, and uh, that the sailors actually knew the, uh, to actually do, be the flight uh, uh, pilots, and they would be teaching the JG uh, ensigns and JGs, and Dad had to take over once because an ensign had him hit, headed right for the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what would the difference be uh, between a blimp and a dirigible? Uh, <clears throat> a blimp is a, a virtually a bag with a gondola on the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh, dirigible actually has a rigid structure inside with gas bags inside it. Ah, okay. So there's a rigid, there is a rigid structure uh, holding the thing together. Interesting. So th and then what did your dad do? Did he retire after, after this dangerous and experience? Da or? Da dad, <clears throat> dad eventually went to work back for, as a civilian for the U.S. Navy at, uh, at, uh, in, Palo Alto, and uh, there's a dirigible field and hangar still in existence oh. up in near Menlo Park in California. Dad spent a few years there and then transferred to uh, the naval base, naval air station, uh, uh, San Diego, uh, North Island. So were you born in San Diego? No, I was born in Lakers. Oh, in New Jersey, but and you moved born, to San Diego. Yes, and, <laughs> but so I was five or six years old when we got to San Diego. So um, how did your dad's experience as a pilot or a sailor of dirigibles impact your eventual uh, said, career choice? Said, uh, you should become an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> he was a man of few words, obviously. That's what he, he just said. He said, if you're going to do something, be an engineer. <laughs> well, Joe, I'm, I'm sort of running out of questions. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your, your dad's dirigible experience? Oh, well, dad also was a, was a, uh, his hobby was being a gymnast. Oh. And, it, and, it, and it served him well because they tried. That when he became went into the Navy, because he was a high wire, he was a high wire act, and he would he would entertain children by doing backflips down this a street, or putting a ladder up against the house and pushing the ladder off and run down the ladder oh. as it was falling, and but in reality, what saved his life was that they trained in in in, in uh, hydrogen balloons at the beginning of training, and they landed in high tension wires once, and dad being an acrobat actually flipped himself, but knowing electricity, he, he flipped himself out of the basket and only grabbed one wire and went hand over hand over the wire and then shinnied down a pole because they were about 20 miles from nowhere in Lakehurst. Your dad was a smart man, and, uh, and obviously that, that fruit, fruit from the tree didn't fall too far when it comes to you. Okay. <laughs>
So he, he, was a, he was really a great guy. I wonder if he ever tried any tricks on the dirigible. You know, you could see a little a trapeze. Yeah. No, uh, no, <laughs> no, he was, he, he, no, his, he nearly got court-martialed once because they, every, every sailor chewed tobacco. And there was no smoking allowed, obviously, because of fire. <clears throat> Not explosion, but fire. Yeah, right. And uh, so, Dad, one day, the admiral was passing underneath the dirigible, and the dir and the admiral got a big splat of dark stuff on his hat. <laughs> and my dad was about a hundred feet up in the air above him, and they pulled him in and started to court martial him. <laughs> But they proved that it was an oil drop and not, oh, oh, oh. and not tobacco juice. So he was saved. <laughs> right. They did the DNA on the, right. on the spill, right? Right. <laughs> Fantastic story. Well, Joe, thank right. you very much You're for your welcome. stories. And, and uh, thank you for being a past president. And, and also thank you for being a founder of the professional group on RFI. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs>